the biblical prophecies are being realized. As the prophet Amos said, they shall rebuild ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine. They shall till gardens and eat their fruits. And I will plant them upon their soil, never to be uprooted again. Veshavti echvut ami Israel. ובנו ערים נשמות וישבו, ונטו כרמים ושתו את יינם, ועשו גינות ואכלו את בריאם, ונטתים על אדמתם, ולא ינטשו עוד. Very interesting uh, speech that uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu gave at the United Nations and very uh, prophetic uh, speech, I might add, on that as well. I want to take you the, this evening into the Torah and uh, we're going to go into a little issue here. I'm looking for my glasses. I guess I found them, didn't I? Um, going to take a look at something in the book of Exodus, something that Moses said that well, uh, there again, you guys would probably say the ones that agree that uh, of the two witnesses will like this, those that uh, are maybe still skeptical uh, may disagree with me here, but I'm sure you'll find it interesting nonetheless. And I say that, you have to keep in mind, I've got precious brothers and uh, sisters as well that love me with all their heart, uh, very supportive of the ministry here, but have a different view as far as the two witnesses. And I think that's good. I think that's great. I think it's great when we can have a difference of opinion, yet we still have a love for one another and, and a respect. And I think that's a godly thing to, to have. Um, but what I'm going to read to you is something I think that might floor you a little bit. Something totally different that, uh, that even when I read this myself, I was blown away by it. And uh, you're going to find... I assume you're going to find this interesting. Let's take and go to Shmot, the book of Exodus here, and uh, going into the chapter of Dalit and uh, chapter 4, the book of Exodus. And you probably think I'm going to go back to the same thing again. Yeah, partially, but not completely. Uh, let's take a look here where Moses says to God, uh, verse 5, So that they shall believe that Hashem, the God of their forefathers, appeared to you, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Hashem said further to him, Bring your hand to your bosom. He brought his hand to his bosom, then he withdrew it, and behold, his hand was leprous like snow. He said, return your hand to your bosom, and he returned his hand to his bosom. Remember, you got to remember now, to start with, he was showing the serpent, his staff turned to a serpent, and then it was returned back again. And there's something in there, too, that the Lord wants me to see, and I have not fully prayed about that one. But I'm just getting back into these signs here. Uh, so his hand basically is turning to leprosy. It's cleansed back whole again. Um, his hand was leprous like snow. He said, return your hand to your bosom, and he returned his hand to his bosom. Then he removed it from his bosom, and behold, it reverted to be like his, his flesh. Verse 8, though, gets interesting. And it shall be that if they do not believe you, and do not heed the voice of the first sign, they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Now, you guys know already, uh, I hold out to the fact that the voice of the latter sign is a future event. I believe that it is a fulfillment uh, or will be fulfilled by one of the two witnesses of Revelation 11, because in the book of Revelation in the Christian Bible, it speaks of the two witnesses 
uh, which is the same as Zechariah, the two anointed ones uh, that are on either side of the, uh, or the two olive trees, uh, which are the two anointed ones there on the either side of the candle uh, stand there. Um, and it's quite ironic here because he says if they don't believe the voice of the first sign, uh, it shall be if they do not believe you and do not heed the voice of the first sign. And clearly Israel did not believe. Neither did Pharaoh. Uh, something we had to keep in mind because the serpent or the rod turned to a serpent was a sign to Pharaoh. Um, the hand of leprosy, a sign of healing, of course the serpent, the rod that turned to a serpent, uh, we find later when he puts the serpent on the brass pole, etc., you know it's, it represents divine judgment because brass is, is judgment. Uh, but let me just back up a little bit here. Moses responded and said, this is, let's just go back to verse 1 in chapter 4. But they will not believe me, that they will not heed my voice, for they will say, Hashem did not appear to you. And Hashem said to him, what is it in your hand? He said, a staff. And he said, it cast on the ground. He cast on the ground and became a snake. Moses fled from it. Hashem said to Moses, stretch out your hand and grasp its tail. He stretched out his hand and grasped. And, uh, and, and, it be, uh, and tightly, and it became a staff in his, in his palm. Uh, of course, now we got this here. We got the part about the, the leprosy, his hand turning to leprosy. Um, I, I can't really say for sure exactly what the signs mean. I have not prayerfully really considered that as of yet. But what I do know is the voice of the sign. And that was Moses was a voice, was God's voice to the people. And... God makes the statement, if they do not believe, excuse me, and it shall come, um, uh, get back here to verse 8, and it shall be that if they do not believe you and do not heed the voice of the first sign, they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And so it's kind of odd the way God words that, letting us know there does come a time when Israel believes, and it's the voice of the latter sign. But he makes it questionable whether or not they'll believe the first time. And scripture bears out that Israel did not truly believe. Now, this is when it gets more interesting. He goes on to say in verse 9, And it shall be that if they do not believe even these two signs, and do not heed your voice. Now, notice, the voice becomes singular. Um... Two different time periods, but the voice becomes singular. Then do not heed your voice. Then you shall take from the water of the river and pour it out on the dry land. And the water that you shall take from the river will become blood when it is on the dry land. Something going through my heart as I'm just reading this again. Do you realize this was never fulfilled? And that may be a shock to you. Moses taking the water from the river and pouring that water on the dry land and that water becoming blood has not been fulfilled. You can search it out all you want. When God sends Moses in Egypt and he goes down and he takes his rod and he strikes the ground, excuse me, strikes the river, the river turned to blood, God commands him to all the water pots, they all turn to blood. The ponds all turn to blood. To where there was no water that could be drank because of it. But this passage speaks of Moses going and taking water out of the river and pouring that water on the dry ground and that becomes blood. Let's read it again. And it shall be that if they do not believe even these two signs and do not heed your voice, 
Then you shall take from the water of the river and pour it out on the dry land, and the water that you shall take from the river will become blood when it is on the dry land. It is judgment. For rejecting what? Rejecting the Holy Spirit. When Yeshua, when his side was pierced on Calvary by the Roman soldiers, and the water and the blood came out, but it was separated. And as I've mentioned in time past to you, that water was a representation of eternal life, is a representation of the Holy Ghost. And God has been wanting to restore with Israel the Holy Spirit ever since the fall in the garden. When he come down on Mount Sinai, God came down to show that he wanted that relationship restored. But he also knew that it would take a sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice, God coming down himself in the body of his own son, the Lord Jesus, Beshem Yeshua, and becoming the sacrifice for the sins of the world, that he might pour out his own blood to pay the penalty of sin, and that when his side would be opened up, it would be as Adam's side was opened up, and that water that came from his side was a representation of the Holy Spirit being given to be poured out. When Elijah and Moses, when they come to Israel, they're coming to bring the redemption, to bring the knowledge of redemption to Israel. And where we have made our mistake as a people, where we rejected the Mashiach and who he was, Yeshua being Mashiach of that day, and they're bringing that life, that sign to our people to let them know this is where we went wrong. And again, the signs are repeated again. The heavens will be closed up that it does not rain. The plagues and everything else that happens during their ministry. The Bible says in Revelation of the two witnesses that whatever plague they want to bring forth, they can bring it forth. And then God finals it up when he's talking to Moses, prophesying to him of a future event when he says, if they don't believe you, and it shall be that if they do not believe even these two signs and do not heed your voice, then you shall take from the water of the river and pour it out on the dry land and the water that you shall take from the river will become blood when it is on the dry land. Because once the water of life is rejected and that sign that you not heed the voice of Moses in this day that we're living in now, nothing but judgment is to follow. And it's not only to the Jew but to the Gentile as well. Now, let's read in Isaiah 34, chapter 34, Yeshayahu. Come near you nations to hear and hearken you people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all the, their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up of, uh, out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down. Now the scroll, the heavens are not being parted, they're being rolled together, they're being closed up. No mercy is being given any longer. As a leaf falleth out from the vine, and as all as a falling fig from the fig tree, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Edomiah, which is Edom, by the way, and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Vatican gets caught up in this judgment. For my sword shall be... I'm sorry. Verse 6. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats. 
with the fat of the kidneys of rams, for the Lord had sacrificed in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Edomia. Uh, Basra is a city in uh, Edom. The unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. You see Moses' prophet, the prophecy God gave to Moses beginning to come to pass. He will take water from the river. Uh, Revelation chapter 11 says, I have power to turn the water to blood. That water will turn to blood. And when he pours it out in the sight of Israel just before he is killed, then Israel will recognize the judgment has come upon them. Or come upon the world, not just... Uh, you have to keep in mind though, the, my brethren that reject what God does will be caught up in this as well. And the unicorn shall come down with them and the bullocks with bulls and their land shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with, his, with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 2, the ending half, the part that Yeshua did not read because it was not that time at yet. And the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. The embattlement, the dividing of the land. So as Prime Minister Netanyahu made the comment, we were here long ago, an ancient people, and we will be here at the end. It is, we have seen, I should say, let me, let me just finish this last verse here, or this next verse. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall be not quenched night or nor day, the smoke thereof shall go up forever, from generation to generation it shall lie waste, none shall pass through it forever and ever. What a judgment. Um, you can continue to read this uh, if you so desire, but it has been a tremendous exodus that God has done for the children of Israel in, this, in, in modern days. Um, but we must also understand there is one more exodus still yet to take place in, in, in Israel. And it will be for the remnant that God is coming to save. The chosen of Israel that are there now. Um, it, it's kind of interesting because I know that there are some that believe that uh, Israel is made up a bunch of, uh, as they call it, Zionists. Uh, and they don't like Israel very much. But you know, you have to be careful about what you say there because God's elect are in the, are, are, are in that group he is coming for a remnant and that remnant will be saved there will be 144,000 that will be saved and as we just read here in, in, in Revelation 15 uh, verse 2 and I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God and they sing the song of Moses, uh, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. It is a tremendous event that's fixing to happen on this earth. And all I can do is tell you to be, pray. If you've ever prayed, this is the hour to pray. We are at the verge of of some of the most major events in the world's history, the most catastrophic events that could ever happen. Um, I do want to say one last thing as I close with you tonight. I want to thank you, those of you that have been praying for us, praying for the ministry, praying for Israel. God bless you from the depth of my heart. I thank you for that. Um, those of you that have been so kind to help contribute to the ministry, I want to thank you as well. In fact, there were two that we received. Uh, um, one sister, in fact, put from, from over in the UK, had put a little note in the uh, envelope, a prayer that the, 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 the gift that she had sent would make it safely. It did. 
Uh, I've written a letter back and will be mailing that out, Lord willing, uh, by Friday. And I uh, want to thank you guys. Uh, and we had an anonymous uh, donor that, that sent an envelope as well uh, that did arrive safely. Let me just say that. I um, have no idea who that was, but again, I want to thank you from the depth of our heart. Uh, it is everything, my wife, I should say, guards every penny that is given uh, with due diligence that nothing of God's is used in vain or is wasted, but is carefully taken care of. So we thank you for that. God bless you. Pray for me. Uh, I do believe I might have to go to the dentist. Uh, besides, still fighting a uh, sinus issue here with a, like a flu little virus thing that's been going around in our home here. Uh, but that tooth that I told you that I'm going to be missing before too long, it's, it's got to come out. It's giving me a little bit of a fit tonight. I love you guys.